eight persons P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W are sitting around a circular table. Some of them are facing towards the center, while some are facing outside the center of the table. Right? So there are eight persons P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, and W. Some of them are facing towards the center, and some are facing outside the center. Now, what does the sum mean? No clue. It can be four persons facing center, four outwards. It can be five persons facing center, three persons facing outwards, or any other combination. All right? It could be seven persons facing center and only one person facing outwards. All that is possible. So that's the complexity. We do not know what exactly is the number of persons facing center. But then one clue given to us here is not more than two persons sitting together are facing the same direction. Not more than two. Not more than two persons sitting together are facing the same direction. Which means maximum two persons who are immediate neighbors can be facing both center or both outwards. We cannot have three consecutive persons facing centers or three consecutive persons facing outwards. That's the point here, right? We cannot have three persons or more than three persons. We cannot have three persons or more than three consecutive persons. You're getting it. We cannot have three consecutive persons or more than three consecutive persons facing the same direction. So that's what you need to keep in mind. And now are the clues here. U sits third to the left of P, T sits third to the right of S, who is an immediate neighbor of P. Both S and P are facing the same direction to each other. So you have to find out the best way to start the arrangement. U sits third to the left of P, there are two possibilities, right? T sits third to the right of S, there are two possibilities because S's direction is not known to us. Who is an immediate neighbor of P? Both S and P are facing in the same direction to each other. As many as persons sit between S and W, as between W and V. R sits second to the left of U. T does not sit opposite to P. T does not sit opposite to P. Both R and Q face same direction to each other. T and W face opposite direction to each other. T and W face opposite direction to each other. W face outside the center. So I think one thing that we know is W face outside the center. T and W face opposite direction to each other. Okay. So, so let's start. I think we'll take up two circles. This clearly is not a circle. Let me just take up the first circle. Yeah, eight positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? Remember, when a person is facing center, left is clockwise, right is anti-clockwise. And when the person faces outwards, these two interchange. Meaning left becomes anti-clockwise and right becomes clockwise. Now, if you look at the last statement here, W face outside the center. W face outside the center. So we know that W is facing outwards. Right? W is facing outwards. O is outwards, let's say. Now, if you see T and W face opposite direction to each other. T and W face opposite direction to each other, meaning what? If W faces center, T will face outwards. If W faces outwards, T will face center. Right? T and W face opposite direction to each other. They are not sitting opposite to each other. They are face... T and W faces opposite direction to each other. Yeah, I think the way the sentence is being given, it's a little confusing, but in my view, the context here is T and W face opposite direction to each other. They are not sitting to each opposite each other, right? T and W face Yeah, I mean, if they were actually sitting opposite to each other, the sentence would have been T and W face each other. It will not be face opposite direction to each other. So basically, the sentence here means that T and W are facing opposite directions. Meaning, if W face outside, T will face center. Now, since W is facing outside, T should be facing center. T will be facing center, right? So I'm trying to mark the directions as many as possible so that when you're doing the arrangement, it becomes easy. And now, uh, both S and P are facing in the same direction is given, but we do not know what the direction is. As many persons sit between S and W as between W and V. R sits second to the left of U. T does not sit opposite to P. Both R and Q face the same direction to each other. Yeah, so both R and Q face the same direction. Again, we have no clue about that. So where shall we start from? Let's, let's start from U sits third to the left of P. Hmm? U sits third to the left of P. So it all depends on P's direction, right? Is P facing center or outwards? So let's assume P is facing center. And let me draw one more circle where P is facing outwards because we have to start with two possibilities. P is facing outwards. 
in this case p is facing center of the table in this case p is facing outwards of the table right now read the statement u sits third to the left of p u sits third to the left of p so third to the left of p first second third u comes here third to the left of p first second third anti-clockwise right this time p is facing outwards so u will be anti-clockwise i mean left will be anti-clockwise so first second third u comes here remember u's direction is not known to us center or outward for u is not known to us u sits third to left of p now t sits third to the right of s who is an immediate neighbor of p t sits third to the right of s who is an immediate neighbor who is an immediate neighbor of p s s basically is an immediate neighbor of p S is an immediate neighbor of P. S is an immediate neighbor of P means what? S comes in either of these two positions. In this case, S comes in either of these two positions. And T sits third to the right of S. T sits third to the right of S. So U is an immediate neighbor of P has been marked. We know that there are two possibilities for each of the cases. Now T sits third to the right of S. T sits third to the right of S. And both S and P are facing the same direction as each other okay this is also easy both s and p both s and p are facing the same direction to each other meaning in first case when p is facing center s will also face center in second case when p is facing outwards s also would face outwards so let's assume s is here and facing center wherever s is he should be facing center so t sits third to the right of s t sits third to the right of s so if s is here facing center third to the right of s first second third t can come here but in case s is here where will t come? First, second, third, t comes here. Both are possible. Mm -mm. Ah, but there is one point which says t does not sit opposite to p. Look at this point. I think let's club this point. t does not sit opposite to p. If I take s here in this place, facing center, where will t come? t is third to the right of s. First, second, third. t is third to the right of s. t would come here. If this is s1, then this is t1. But then T and P will become opposite to each other. The sentence says T does not sit opposite to P, which means S1 and T1 is wrong. So S has to be correct. This has to be correct. S should be facing center. If S is facing center, where will T come? First, second, third. Third to the right of S, right? T is third to the right of S. T sits third to the right of S. So we have been able to fix T and S as well. Do the same thing in the case 2 as well. We know that T sits third to the right of S. Here S is facing outwards. So if we take third to right, first, second, third, for this S, if he's facing outwards, T is third to the right, right? First, second, third. T comes here. T and P will become opposite to each other, which is not allowed. So S has to come here. S will be facing outwards and T is third to the right of S. First, second, third. T comes here. So this time, since S is facing outwards, right is clockwise. Now let me clear the markings here so that it becomes easier to follow. Yeah, so this is done. Now it says as many persons sit between S and W as between W and V. As many persons sit between S and W as between W and V. Okay, so this point is very useful but not immediately because W's position is not fixed. Right, W's position is not fixed. He says as many persons sit between S and W as between W and V. So, you know, technically S and V, I mean W should be exactly between S and V. W has to come exactly between S and V. But anyway, let me see if there is any other easier point to pick up. R sits second to the left of U. I think this we can use. R sits second to the left of U. U is fixed, right? Second to the left of U. First and second, can R come here? No. First and second, R has to come here. Left of U was clockwise, meaning U is facing center. R sits second to the left of U. First and second, R is second to the left of U. In this case, second to the left of U, first and second, not possible. First and second, possible. So R comes here. Second to the left of U, left of U has come out anti-clockwise, meaning U is facing outwards. Right? Oh, by the way, we know that T is facing center. I forgot about this. T is facing center. So we can fix that also. T is facing center. Here also T is facing center. Right? T is facing center. And W is facing outwards. Whenever we put W. So this also is done. R sits second to the left of U is also done. Both R and Q face same direction to each other. Both R and Q face same direction to each other. It's not known to us yet. Okay. Now who all are left? I think in the arrangement we have marked P, R, S, U and T. The persons who are left out are uh, V, W and Q. V, W and Q. So 
what are the points left both r and q face the same direction okay so if r is facing center q also is face center and vice versa the important point here is this as many persons sit between s and w as between w and v as many persons sit between s and w as between w and v uh, so i think one way to look at it here is see as many people sit between s and w as between w and v that's possible only when w is exactly in the middle of s and v so between s and w if there are two persons between v and w also there should be two persons if there are three persons between here so there should be three persons if there is one person in between here also there should be one person between v and w so try and do this s w and v will be equidistant from each other meaning w will be exactly in the middle of s and v so s is here i think w and v should take these two positions if you take w here and v there that point will break up right number of people between s and w and number of people between w and v should be same so if you take w here number of people between s and w is only one but within w and v will become more even if v is there it becomes more w cannot go there similarly if you take w here number of people between s and w is two and number of people between w and v will become one so i think the only possibility is w comes here and v comes here same same argument w should be exactly between v and w i mean sorry w should be exactly between s and v no no hold on this is also going wrong one second so uh let me clear ha huh. w should be exactly between s and v but that doesn't seem likely in the case here case 1 this is case 2 the possible way is this w comes here and v comes here so two persons between s and w two persons between v and w Are you getting it there are two persons between s and w and there are two persons between v and w similarly in case 2 if i take s here i think w can come here and v can come here so there are two persons between s and w and there are two persons between v and w this this points hold true as many persons sit between s and w as between W and V, S and W, and W and V, right? Now, who is left out? Q is left out. Q has to come wherever that position is. Now, how do we eliminate the wrong one? Okay, we have one more statement here which we have not used so far. Not more than two persons sitting together are facing the same direction. This is going to be a very very important point in deciding the correct arrangement, right? Not more than two persons sitting together are going to face the same direction. So if you see, S and P are already sitting together and they are facing center. So can we face center? No, we has to face outwards because if V is also facing center, then consecutively three persons will be facing center. So V has to face outwards. Similarly, Q also has to face outwards because if Q is facing center, Q S P all three will be facing center, which is not possible, right? Maximum two consecutive persons can face the same direction. So we are able to fix the positions of Q and V. Similarly, in this case, if you see, and now we also know that uh, Q and R will face the same direction. Both R and Q face the same direction to each other. So Q is facing outwards. R also should be facing outwards. Right? R also should be facing outwards. Uh, try to do the same thing in the second arrangement. Uh, here we have both S and P facing outwards. Both S and P facing outwards. So V should face center. Q also should face center. Because otherwise it will become. three consecutive persons facing center now we know that q and r face the same direction q and r both faces in direction if q is facing center r also should face center the moment i do this because q is facing center r also has to face center this becomes wrong you see v t and r all three are facing center is it allowed not allowed not more than two persons sitting together are facing same direction so here v t r all three of them are facing center which is not allowed hence case 2 is wrong now case 1 has to be correct the only thing is in case 1 we have not fixed the uh, direction of w yet try to do that
direction of W. So this is center outwards. It can be center, center outwards, outwards. W can face either direction. I don't think anything can be done about W. Oh, w is facing outward, sorry. How do we know? W face outside. Oh, I missed that last point, sorry. W face outside the center. W should be facing outside the center. W is facing outwards. I didn't use this part. This is the last statement. W face outside the center. Yeah, so we are done. First one is a character element. So you see, again, a very interesting one. The challenge here was we did not know how many are facing center and how many are facing outwards. But then the clue here, not more than two persons sitting together are facing the same direction is very, very important in deciding out the correct one. Because of that only the case two got eliminated. Here we got V, T and R, all three of them facing the center. So it's all about reading between the lines and finding out those hidden clues.